Hey, this is Miss Hook. Welcome to Chapter 3. Okay, so in this chapter, we're going to look at the cell. We'll look at the parts of the cell, their functions, um, and how it all works together. We'll look at types of cell division and cell aging. There are over 200 different types of human cells. Uh, these different types of cells are determined by what genes are turned on in their nucleus. That determines what proteins are made and the functions of the cells. So we've got all these different cells that make up different types of tissue and have different functions throughout the body. Okay, you can divide your cell into three main parts. The plasma membrane, separating the external environment from the internal cell. The cytoplasm, and that has two parts. First, the cytosol. So that's the uh, solution, the fluid in there, and all the solutes. And then you've also got organelles, the metabolic machinery of the cells. And last, you've got the nucleus. Inside there, you've got your DNA. Uh, when it's dividing, it's in that thicker structure called chromosomes. And on those chromosomes, you've got different genes. Each gene codes for a protein. Here's a diagram of the parts of the cells. Plasma membrane on the outside, cytosol, and then organelles. Here's the nucleus. Okay, so first we're going to look at the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane helps keep the environment separate. It helps us have a different internal environment. So we have different types of solutes on the inside of the cell versus the outside. It's made up of phospholipids. So phosphate head, phospholipid tails, and it's a phospholipid bilayer. So there's two layers of the phospholipids. Your phosphate heads are polar, which means they have charge, and they like water. They're hydrophilic. So they're on the outside touching the water. The phosphate tails, on the other hand, are hydrophobic, water-fearing. And they are nonpolar. They don't dissolve in water. They stay away from it. So we've got them hidden away from the water in the middle. You can think of the membrane as what's called a fluid mosaic. You've got proteins sitting on there on the phospholipids, and they're all just kind of moving around on the outside. It's kind of like an ocean where they're just sitting on top of the waves and moving with the current. Your phospholipids are very kind of oily. They're, they're lipids. Um, so to increase the stability, we've got cholesterol in there, which is a bit of a harder fat. And it gives a little more solid structure. Sitting on your plasma membrane, you've got proteins. Uh, there are a couple different types. The first is integral. They are integrated into the plasma membrane. And if they go all the way across from one side to the other, they can also be called transmembrane. Transcontinental flight would go across continents. This goes across the plasma membrane. The other type of proteins you've got are peripheral proteins. Those are just sitting on the side. So your peripheral vision is on the side. Peripheral proteins are on the side of your cell. Oftentimes, they'll be like linkers to other cells where they attach to other peripheral proteins. Okay, we're going to look at the different types of functions that membrane proteins can have. Uh, they're going to be very, very important for cell function. Based on the proteins on the outside of the membrane, you can have different types of receptors, different channels to allow different things into the cell. It'll change its uh, whole structure. Let's look at the first three types of proteins. On the top, you've got an ion channel. So there, it's just a water-filled space that goes all the way across. Um, these are very specific to a certain ion. So examples of ions are charged particles. You can have sodium channels, potassium channels, chloride channels, uh, calcium channels, where these ions that can't cross through the plasma membrane now can move through this channel. Another type is the carrier protein, and this is a similar idea. Uh, here, though, the carrier has to change shape to transport uh, different molecules across the membrane. So third, we've got the receptor proteins. 
An example of that would be when dealing with hormones, a hormone would be like a ligand. A ligand is something that binds. It moves through the blood, through the body, looking for its receptor, where it can bind in at and make a change inside the cell. Next three, enzyme. So we've covered enzymes a bit. They help increase the rates of reactions. They have a binding site here, uh, like an active site where the reaction takes place and they help reactions go thousands to millions of times faster. Next, linker proteins. Those can attach the cell on the inside to different parts of the cell and then on the outside to other cells. They help link things together. And then next you've got uh, cell identity markers. All of our cells have these MHC proteins. Those mark them as our own. Our immune system goes through and it looks for cells without our MHC markers. And that helps them identify them as foreign. Having to do with those MHC markers, you've got on the outside of the plasma membrane what's called a glycocalyx. Glyco sugar, calyx covering. So attached to proteins and lipids, you've got sugars on the outside. That'll be what our white blood cells are looking at specifically to see, is this cell ours or is it not? And when they find something with the wrong receptors, they can attack it, mount an immune response. Okay, we looked at linker proteins as well. They can make different types of cell junctions. We'll look at tight junctions, desmosomes, and gap junctions. Okay, the first we're going to look at is like tight junctions. There it's almost as if the two cells have been zippered together. There's lots of points of contact where nothing can cross in between the two cells. Where might these be useful? Anywhere you want to keep things separate. You've got a lot of tight junctions in your skin. It's actually your first portion of your immune system, a protective barrier that's formed between us and the outside. Next, we've got desmosomes. So these are as if two people are holding hands. They're connected to each other, but they've got a lot more uh, movement allowed there. So you'd want this in places where you need cells connected, but they have to stretch. They, uh, they don't want to tear. So this would be helpful like in our cardiac muscle tissue. Uh, we want those cells to be connected, but if they had the tight junctions, they would get ripped. So we've got desmosomes. Last, gap junctions. Here you've got two channel proteins on different cells that ions can travel from one cell through to the next. Uh, also in cardiac muscle tissue, so this allows our pacemaker cells to start a signal and have it travel cell to cell so we can have a heartbeat. Here's some review questions. Go back through the lecture and find the answers. Next, we're going to look at membrane permeability. What permeability means is it's the ability to cross. So an open doorway would be permeable. Everybody can cross through that doorway. If the door is closed, it would be considered impermeable. Nobody can get through. Plasma membranes are in the middle. They are selectively permeable. So some things can get through, whereas others can't. So in our example, if we made it like a cat door, People with little hips could get through, but bigger people couldn't. Okay. Our plasma membranes are selectively permeable, not only by size, but by charge. We've got that hydrophobic layer of phospholipids, and only fatty things can pass through it. Hydro, uh, hydrophilic molecules, like uh, things that are polar, can't dissolve in here. They don't cross. So small things like gases, nonpolar molecules can cross right through the plasma membrane. Whereas things with charges, sugars, large molecules, ions, sodium, potassium, they can't. So if they want to get from one side of the membrane to the other, they need help. Okay. Yep, small molecules, nonpolar, hydrophobic, can move through. Okay, so how do we get those other molecules that can't just move through uh, from one side to the other of the plasma membrane? We can use channels and carrier proteins. 
So here is an example of a sodium channel. There's just the channel open. And here's a glucose transporter. So this is going to change shape as it moves glucose through. We can also transport big things using vesicles, where we can take things in or send things out that are wrapped in their own little plasma membrane. Now we're going to look at how molecules want to move. Molecules always want to go towards disorder, this idea of entropy. And what that means is they want to spread out. They want to be the most random that they can be. So they're going to go to areas from where they're more highly concentrated, look at all the red molecules in that space, to where they're less concentrated. They want to spread out. So in A, they want to move out. And in B, we've got high concentration on the outside, low concentration on the inside. The red molecule wants to move inside. That's going to be very important for how things move. Okay, we're going to look at the different types of processes. Passive processes require no energy input. We're letting molecules move down their concentration gradient from where they're higher concentrated to lower the way they want to move. Active processes, active require ATP. They require energy. So this is moving molecules against their concentration gradient or moving really big things. There's an animation you can do. Okay, let's start with the passive processes. No energy input required. First, you've got diffusion. So simple diffusion is just things spreading out. You've got in this picture, this blue dye has been added and it slowly spreads out from where it's more highly concentrated to where it's more low until the odds of you finding a blue dye molecule is equal throughout. That's the most random it could be. Here, if you were looking for one, you'd know they have to be in here. There, they could be anywhere. Okay. So the rate of diffusion can be uh, influenced by several things. The steepness of the concentration gradient. If I drop 10 drops of blue dye, they're going to move faster than if I only drop one drop. Temperature. Higher temperature means that molecules are moving faster. Uh, and because they're moving faster, they're going to be able to diffuse more quickly. Next, we've got the mass of diffusion. Smaller things move faster. Uh, if you think about trying to get 100 cats through a door, it's a lot faster than 100 people. They're smaller, they can fit through spaces more easily. Next, surface area. The more surface area you have, the more space for diffusion, the faster it goes. Uh, so there, uh, like in your lungs, we have all this surface area for diffusion of gases. We've got this set up with all these rounded edges, all these little uh, alveoli, these circular sacs, to help us increase the surface area. If you laid all of that space out, that thin membrane where gases diffuse out, It'd be like 40 tennis courts. It's a lot of space. And last, diffusion distance. The less distance they have to travel, the faster they do it. Okay, next we've got facilitated diffusion. So here, molecules are moving just like in normal simple diffusion, except they're the molecules that need help crossing the membrane. Those polar molecules, things with charge. So we've got facilitated diffusion with uh, channel membrane proteins and carrier membrane proteins. So here's a channel. Uh, it's a potassium channel. We're letting potassium move down its concentration gradient from high to low. That's channel mediated, mediated facilitated diffusion. And here's carrier mediated facilitated diffusion. We're letting glucose down, go down its uh, concentration gradient We've got this carrier protein that changes shape allows it to do so. So simple diffusion moves right through. Channel mediated uses a channel. Carrier mediated uses a carrier. All of these molecules are moving from high to low the way they want to move. That's why they, they've got all this potential energy they're using to move. They don't need any ATP. We don't need to put any work into it ourselves. The molecules are happy to move that way if you're to give them personalities.